Peace. Welcome to the video, you guys. I thought it was a perfect day to show you guys the deck that I play with in the Pokemon trading card game. I've been playing for a couple of weeks now in a more competitive way, pretty much me versus Taco, me versus our friend who actually helped me build this deck. And then recently I got to go to an event, a pre-release event for Unbroken Bonds, the brand new Pokemon card set that is coming out. It was a lot of fun and it was my first experience playing people outside of my own house in Pokemon, which was really awesome. I also wanted to do this video because they are actually changing the rules for competitive legal Pokemon gameplay in August, I believe. So anything that is Ultra Prism and below is no longer going to be legal in gameplay, which is super unfortunate. I'm actually not quite sure how many cards I have, if any, in here that will be illegal soon, but I thought it'd be awesome to show you guys my currently legal, possibly illegal in a couple of months, deck that I play with. Real quick, before we get into the deck, I just wanted to let you guys know, it's been amazing making videos for YouTube, and most of the people that I run into are usually filtering in from my Twitch channel, because I've been a streamer for a couple of years now, but those of you who are from the YouTube Pokemon community, it is so good to meet you. Let me know in the comments if that is where you came from, if you don't know me from anywhere else, because I just think that's the coolest thing, meeting new people on in the YouTube sphere. I also just recently made a Pokemon Instagram, so it's exclusively Pokemon content. It's called Frosted Pokeboo on Instagram, and I've met a lot of cool people through there too, which has been super awesome. So if you guys have Instagram, I'm on there as well, Frosted Pokeboo. Okay, now that we have all that out of the way, let's get into my deck! Alright, Goobies. So this is my little deck box. I'm pretty sure this is a Hoopa. Honestly, I don't even know. I bought this box because it was the only one at the store, but I actually really like it. It's like a soft texture. It's an official Pokemon box as well. I think that's a Hoopa, and it also has like a little Velcro strap on it. ASMR. Velcro strap. Okay, I'm sorry. This is my 60 card deck. I don't really know the exact term for like the type of deck I play with. I think it's just like a normal. <laughs> I know they have like expanded decks and stuff that include like illegal cards, but mine is just regular. So yeah, that's what I'm messing with. My ditto sleeves, you guys know I'm a huge ditto fan. I will just get right into the cards that we have. I guess I'll sort them out and kind of go through what's going on. It is a water deck. I have nothing but water Pokemon and water energies. So let's get into it. Okay, Goobies, this is my entire deck laid out. I have 12 water energies in this deck, which are right over there. For my base Pokemon, I have four Vulpix, four Squirtles, a Suicune GX, a Tapu Fini GX, and then for my stage ones, I have two Ninetale GXs, two regular Ninetales, a War Turtle, and then for stage two, of course, my three Blastoise. If you guys are wondering why I only have one more turtle for when I have four Squirtles and three Blastoise, it's because I actually recently just made a change where I subbed out a couple of war turtles for both rare candies and the supporter cards. I'll explain it in a little bit, but if you guys are confused, trust me, it makes sense in the end, I swear. So playing this deck, I haven't run into too many issues. A couple of times I actually got wrecked simply because I didn't have a stadium card to switch out and my opponent did and they threw down their stadium card which greatly helped them and I couldn't replace it or get rid of it at all because I didn't have stadium cards. So I actually have lost a couple of games because of that. So I added a stadium card which is Brooklet Hill and it says once during each player's turn, that player may search their deck for a basic water type Pokemon or basic fighting Pokemon, put it onto their bench and shuffle their deck. This I don't use very often, but it's simply, I mean, it's good if I need to search for a basic. Um, 
it helps me out and if I need to replace my opponent's tra or stadium card, it is super helpful as well. If you guys have any sort of input or info about my deck that you think would possibly improve it, also let me know. So this deck heavily relies on Blastoise and that's simply because he has this super bomb move, Powerful Squall, and it says once during your turn before your attack, you may look at the top six cards of your deck and attach any number of water energy cards you find there to a Pokemon in any way you like. To your, sorry, to your Pokemon in any way you like. Shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So this move is absolutely insane for a couple of reasons. Number one, you get to look at six cards, which is generally a lot. Honestly, I could play more energy cards in this deck. I think I could take out a couple and throw a lot more energy in there than I have now. But if I need to find my energy, this is a super quick way to do so. Um, not only that, but you can actually use this ability multiple times. So if you have two Blastoise on your bench, you can actually use his Powerful Squall twice in a row. It doesn't count for placing energy on your turn because it's an ability move, and it doesn't make you or force you to place it only on one Pokemon. You could place one on, you know, War Turtle or one or two onto Ninetales in any order you like. So it's actually a pretty insane um, energy placement move, which ha has been like my Hail Mary. If you can get your Blastoise out pretty quickly, it's pretty much game unless they unless you somehow get wrecked in some other way if you get your blastoise out soon enough he hits he applies all of his energy super quickly hits for 150 every time and that's why i feel like his hydro tackle this pokemon does 30 damage to itself when it when it uses it is like the way of nerfing him essentially because otherwise he would have just been too op so if you do use his move you're slowly killing him but you also have to if you need to ever switch him out i have my switch raft which when you retreat a pokemon it heals 30 damage from that pokemon so if you did pull him up to hit with hydro tackle you could also switch raft him and heal that 30 damage he just did to himself so that's also an option. For my Vulpix, I have a couple of different Vulpix. I would like to have all of these simply because the beacon move takes no energies. As you can see, it's a blank energy and it's just a good move. It says, search your deck for up to two Pokemon, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. And that's not two basics, that's two of any Pokemon. So you could be searching for this War Turtle to evolve a Squirtle. You could, you could get the War Turtle and the Blastoise and evolve both of those pretty quickly and use Powerful Squall, get the energies on, and there you go. You have a fully loaded Blastoise. Like, it's pretty sick. Um, I don't use that move as much, simply because the decks I've been playing against my opponents usually have a bunch of GX cards and that's where the evolution to Alolan Vulpix comes in handy because Alolan Ninetales, the evolution, uh, has an ability that prevents all damage from DX or EX Pokemon which means you can't hit this b bad boy. You can't hit him! with any GX move, which is super handy dandy notebook, especially because Taco has an electric deck and I think a, a psychic deck that has primarily GX Pokemon. So you throw a low nine tails up there and there's nothing they can do. Unless they Guzma out a new Pokemon, like they can't hit you. So it's pretty sick. You also get Aurora Beam as the move that hits for 80. Aurora Beam takes it only hits for 80 and it takes three energies, which is kind of a lot, but that's okay. All right, so moving on to my Squirtles. I never really use Squirtle as just a regular Pokemon. Um, like I never use that move unless he's like my starter and I have to use it because I can't evolve him. I don't think I've ever used Tackle or Rain Splash. I just think it's so cute, like how happy the Squirtle is. <laughs> anyway, I have four Squirtles. Um, War Turtle, I don't think I've actually used him a lot either. Maybe I used Waterfall like once, but possibly not because Waterfall only hits for 70. It takes three energies and I'm more than likely not going to be getting those energies unless I'm getting it from the Blastoise special ability, Powerful Squall, because that's just a lot of energies. That is actually why I have my rare candies. 
Um, and the lack of war turtle is actually due to my amount of rare candies I have in here. War turtle is just kind of a backup, but if everything plays out the way I would like, I wouldn't even have to use War Turtle as an evolution card because I have a bunch of rare candies. So rare candy reads, choose one of your basic Pokemon in play. If you have a stage two card in your hand that evolves from that Pokemon, put that card into the basic Pokemon or onto the basic Pokemon to evolve it. You can't use this card during your first turn or on a basic Pokemon that was just put into play. So essentially this is your War Turtle. It's skipping the War Turtle step altogether essentially and just throwing you straight into Blastoise. I just recently added these to the deck because it was taking way too much time for me to be searching my deck just to evolve into Blastoise just to get the energies to either apply to my GXs or to him to hit. So um, that's why I actually added these because it saves so much time. All you need to do is search your deck for a Pokemon or search your deck for a Blastoise rare candy him out, and you're done. We also have, I think I already explained, Switch Raft. Switch Raft, just in case you ever need to switch your Pokemon out, um, you just switch them with this, and it heals damage from your active that you switched as well. Aqua Patch is attach an energy card from your discard pile to one of your benched Pokemon. This one is super, super good. Um, for this deck like you need aqua patches if you're gonna have a water deck pretty much because if any of your Pokemon get knocked out This is the way to retrieve their energy back Especially since my deck isn't super heavy on energy. I only have 12 water energy. So it's not a ton um, Aqua patch is really good for that if any of your dudes get knocked out Aqua patch that energy out as well as if you already placed energy for turn or if you got nothing from powerful squall because you are working through your deck aqua patch is super good to just finish off giving that one last energy to hit the pokemon that you're currently attacking so that's really nice um and then i have some just regular balls we got our balls for the set. I have uh, three nest balls, two timer balls. The timer balls I had in here to search for War Turtle and, or even Ninetales and Blastoise, but usually either one of those. Any evolution Pokemon, pretty much, just to get those evolutions out there. And then search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it onto your bench. I have three nest balls. Honestly, I'm now thinking I could probably get rid of a couple of these but maybe not, I don't know, at least probably one because I have the Vulpix move that allows me to search for Pokemon. I don't think I have a ton of basics. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I'll get rid of some of those, but that's just what I have right now and it's it's been working out. I have a Wishful Baton. I would like to put another one of these in here because I have a couple of um, like my Ninetales GX, the Blastoise, the Suicune especially. Honestly, all my stage one and my GX cards heavily rely on like energy. They take a lot of energy. So this is super helpful for that. It says if a Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack, move up to three basic energy cards from that Pokemon to one of your benched Pokemon. So it's super good for if you had, let's say, three energy on this Blastoise, he's got this on it, he gets knocked out, he's gone. Then you just take those three energy from the Blastoise, throw it on to a low and nine tails GX, or even just a low and nine tails um, regular because it doesn't take damage from GXs. Toss him up into your active position. He's fully loaded, ready to go. And the last item card I have is Rescue Stretcher. Um, I've used this pretty often in this deck. Um, I'll read it to you guys. It says choose one, put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. So I usually always use put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand, um, which is super good for when you need to bring back a Pokemon, <laughs> pretty much. Let's say your Alone Nine Tails got wiped out. You have an alone Vulpix on your bench, and then 
if you rescue Stretcher and Aloha Ninetales, throw it back onto that Vulpix to evolve it. And then maybe the one your active Pokemon gets knocked out, has a Wishful Baton, throw that energy on there, bada bing, bada boo, you're good. You know, <laughs> I don't know. You could use it for several different things. I've used it to get a Blastoise back before because I needed his powerful Squall for energy retrieval. I've used it to get a Suicune back because I needed his GX move. Like, I've used it plenty of times. So I have two of those in there that are also very helpful. Going into Pokemon supporter cards, I have two Cynthia's, which everyone probably knows what she does. Uh, shuffle your hand into your deck, draw six cards. I have two Lilies, which is draw until you have six cards in your hand. If it's your first turn, draw until you have eight. Two Sightseers, you may discard any number of cards from your hand. Draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. If you can't draw any cards in this way, you can't play this card. So that's just pretty much card retrieval supporters, as well as Erica's Hospitality. This one has come in super handy because I usually play opponents that have a ton of Pokemon on their bench, and this allows you to draw a card for each Pokemon that they have in play, which is super helpful for that. Pokemon Fan Club, search your deck for two basic Pokemon. This is also kind of a reason that I want to get rid of a couple of my nest balls, or even one, because I also have a Pokemon Fan Club which also allows you to search for basic Pokemon, which is good. I have Professor Kukui, which draws two cards and then also adds 20 extra damage to that turn that you were attacking with, so that's nice. I would like more of those, honestly. And then Crasher Wake, this is a supporter card I don't even think I've had a chance of playing with yet. I just added this to my deck it says, discard two water energy cards from your hand. If you do, search your deck for up to two cards and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So this comes in super handy if, like, let's say you powerful squalled and already placed energy, you have a couple of extra energy into your hand, you need to get an item card super fast. I mean, you could get literally any card. It says search it up to two cards, so that's any card. You could be searching for a GX, you could be searching for an evolution Pokemon, you could be searching for a supporter card. It's literally any card, so I mean this pretty much comes in super handy dandy. As well as paired with the Aqua Patch, once you discard those two energy cards, just Aqua Patch them back out and you're solid, so. That's super nice. I don't think I don't even think I've had a chance to play with this yet, but I'm hoping it improves my deck a little bit. <laughs> Let's hope. And then last but of course not least, I'm gonna go through my GXs that I have in this deck. I have been debating whether to keep all of these guys in in this deck, but so far they've been okay for me. So my Suicune, probably my favorite GX in this deck. I'll go through his ability first. Once during your turn before your attack, if this Pokemon's on your bench, you may shuffle it and all the cards attached to it into your deck. I've used this once, um, and it was actually accidentally. I thought it was shuffling him back into your hand, which I would much more prefer, uh, but it was into your deck, which kind of sucks. The only reason I think I could think about using this is obviously if he's, if he's about to die, Maybe you took him out of active position with a switch raft and then just pretty much discard him back into your deck so it takes away them knocking him out and taking those two prize cards. Um, the other reason I think I would probably use this is maybe I'm not, like I'm about to deck out and run out of cards, so shuffling him back in would obviously help with that. Um, Cure Stream hits for 120. Uh, during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon attack does 30 less damage before applying weakness and resistance. So this one is like probably the best move that I have, honestly, in my deck. It hits extremely heavy. It subtracts damage that's done to you next turn by your opponent's attacker, as well as it only takes three energies and it doesn't have to discard any energies as well. So you can just... Cure Stream, Cure Stream, Cure Stream, like all day long, which is really nice. Uh, and then of course the GX move, switch this Pokemon with one of your benched Pokemon, plus it hits for 150. So the GX move is also pretty sick, and the reason why I say that is, let's say you 
hit the GX move. So you're hitting for 150. Let's say you're going against like a 270 card or something crazy, because there's cards out there that have insane HP. So you hit for like 150, okay, and then you retreat him essentially and switch him with another one of your Pokemon on your bench. I would probably bring up this Ninetales because if you have if you're going against a GX, it can no longer be hit by that GX. So not only do you do a ton of damage, but you can also switch out to a Pokemon that doesn't get hit, which is really nice. Um, so that is Suicune. He has 180 HP pretty good and then his retreat cost is two and then I have my low in nine tails GX um, I have a couple of low in nine tails two GX and two regular ones I like using this one I probably use this one more simply because it can't get hit by by any GX which is super nice um, but I do sometimes bring this one up especially if I sort of need a heavy HP Pokemon because I have an attacker that's hitting for a lot uh, this attack does, oh sorry, starting with Ice Blade, takes two energies. This attack does 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This has come in super handy for when I have an opponent that is switching Pokemon back and forth to the bench a bunch of times, which Taco does all the time because he's playing a Psychic deck in which he has a Stadium card that like just lets you switch your Pokemon around all the time. So even if I hit his Pokemon pretty heavy, but it has like 20 HP left, he'll just switch it out and I'll be screwed. So this is so nice for when you just need that last hit on a Pokemon to maybe draw your last prize cards or you just want to knock out that Pokemon, knock out its ability or something. That's really awesome. So you can hit the bench with that move. Then Blizzard Edge hits for 160, which is pretty powerful, takes three energy cards, but you also have to discard two energy from this Pokemon. So this is like, I have a love-hate relationship with this move because it sucks discarding two. I understand it because it's such a heavy hitter move, but it really does suck discarding those energies. Um, the only way it kind of doesn't suck is when I have a bunch of aqua patches I can use to just get those energies back anyway. But other than that, it's just like, ah, oh, I gotta discard, no! Like, I hate moves that you have to discard energy, but whatevs. Anyway, and then the GX move only costs two energies, colorless energies, and you move all damage counters from this Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. This is a sick GX move. It is so dang good. Especially because you have such a high HP, you're more than likely not gonna get hit or knocked out by one hit, even if it's a pretty high move. And so let's say they hit you for 160 GX and move all that damage to their Pokemon. If they don't have a high enough HP, they get knocked out, baby! It's so awesome. It's such a good GX move. So that's a bomb card. And then my last GX that I have is Tapu Fini. 170 HP for that guy. Uh, Aqua Ring is a move that requires only one energy. You may switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Literally all it does besides hitting 20 as well. I always forget that that 20 is there because it's so hard to see on the card. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna switch him out. And then I don't do the damage and I'm so upset later. And then you have Hydro Shot, which is three energy cost, two water, one colorless, and it's discard two water energy from this Pokemon. This attack does 120 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. This one is also very good for hitting the bench because it doesn't specify that it has to be the active Pokemon. So that's pretty bomb for hitting the bench. Um, pretty sweet. It does 120, usually knocks most Pokemon out. Um, but you do have to discard energy. <laughs> no. I just hate it. I hate discarding the energy. It makes me so sad. And then the Tapu Storm GX is shuffle your opponent's active Pokemon with all cards attached to it back into their deck. This is sick. I honestly have been debating whether or not to keep this card in my deck, but I just can't let go of this GX move because it's so dang good. Um, I've had a, a really hilarious situation where I was going against an opponent who had Guzzlords, was her main Pokemon, and Guzzlord takes, I think it's like five energies. It's some crazy amount of energies. So she had a ton of energies on this Guzzlord 
and it was hitting for an insane amount of damage and I was just like GX move you're gone baby and just like wiped her entire active Pokemon it was so nice and then she couldn't recover from that really as far as retrieving those energies again and um, you know the time she spent to put those energies onto the Pokemon too it was rough so that one has helped me in a couple of really tight situations which is really nice Okay, Goobies, thank you so much for sticking around through that entire deck explanation. This is my current deck I'm playing with. I'm in the process of making a new one, but I don't have a lot of GX cards, unfortunately, so I need to figure out what deck I want to make and what GX cards I need to get still. But this one has been working pretty well for me. I love water decks, I love water Pokemon, and um, it's super awesome, especially with Unbroken Bonds coming out soon, you know there's going to be a ton of fire decks, so I would strongly recommend you guys make a water deck because you're going to be combating a lot of fire, <laughs> most likely. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've only been playing for a couple of weeks now, so if I didn't explain something or left something out, please excuse that, but I'm still new. I'm very new, and this is all so confusing still to me. Um, but I think I'm getting a hang of it. I'm getting more used to it. So thank you guys for tagging along with me and learning together. <coughs> I just wanted to throw out before I end this video, we also have a Discord server for my Twitch channel, YouTube peeps, all of my community essentially. So if you guys want to join that too, the link is in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs>